Buenos dias, mis amigos. Chapter 20 explained. The book of Revelation, the final book of the New Testament, offers a prophetic vision of the end times, replete with vivid imagery and profound symbolism. Chapter 20 is particularly significant as it delves into the millennium, the final judgment, and the ultimate defeat of Satan. This chapter has been the subject of extensive theological discussion and interpretation, making it a cornerstone for understanding eschatological beliefs within Christianity. Chapter 20 begins with the binding of Satan. An angel descends from heaven, holding the key to the abyss and a great chain. The angel seizes the dragon, identified as the ancient serpent, who is the devil or Satan, and binds him for a thousand. Uh, that, okay. The, again, I saw this yesterday, and <laughs> what is going on with these translators? It, they just don't. They just don't want to get anything right. It seems like okay. So, verse two, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. What's wrong with that? They that is. That part shouldn't be confusing. But when you read these other, here, let's do it this way. When you read these other translations that are the words of men and not the word of God, you're going to see this. And in my mind, at least, there's a huge difference, a big difference. So there's a difference, at least, between the devil and Satan and the devil or Satan because the devil and Satan are the same thing why would you say the devil or Satan as if they were two different things they're the same thing it's the same thing the dragon the serpent of old the devil and Satan it's all the same and it all represents an absence of the Spirit of God okay so to me it's amazing it's amazing why I'm not going to be able to do it, am I? Can I? There we go. The ERV. The GNT. The NABRA. I'm not sure. NCB, NIRV, the NIV. There it is, the NIV. Not surprising. NLV. All right, so I it, it's weird. So this, uh, assuming uh, you know, because the NIV is uh, one of the most popular translations, versions, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm assuming that this guy here is quoting from the NIV. Why would you not question this right here? Who is the devil or Satan? Are you looking at it as though this ancient serpent is the devil or it's also the Satan? It's one of the two. You, people call him the devil or they call him Satan. I, I you know, it, it's just an odd way to to translate that. It, to me, it's just the wording is off <laughs> while the NIV is way off that's just another example identified as the ancient serpent who is the devil or Satan and binds him for a thousand years this act of binding signifies a period during which Satan's influence over the earth is drastically reduced allowing for a time of peace and righteousness that's that's just way off way way off so it's drastically reduced so Satan, he's just not able to fully deceive people, and it's, his powers have been drastically reduced, and now we're living in a time of peace and righteousness. But um, that's all going to come to an end. It's all going to come to an end because... Um, uh, what? 
this, just for fun just for fun we're gonna we're gonna give people this time of peace and then we're gonna pull the rug out from them is that what it is I mean you're gonna be able to go around and have guilt-free sex and then the rug is gonna get pulled out is that what you're teaching I'm trying to understand what these people are teaching this is a very popular view the earth is uh, the, the Satan's influence is drastically reduced now obviously they're referring to a future time they're, they're not realizing that this right here in Revelation 20 is talking about right now all right so I went over this yesterday it's very clear very simple very easy to see that the nation or the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ that's Satan being bound before Jesus came and said the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof so back in the Old Testament there was one country with borders boundaries and inside that country was the kingdom of God outside of that country were the nations deceived by Satan they were they didn't have the kingdom of God it was only for that group of people inside the borders now the wall has been taken down All right pretty easy and now <clears throat> the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ first the Jews and then the Gentiles this is consistent all throughout the Bible especially the New Testament makes it very clear that there is no more group or country with borders boundaries wherein are God's people God's people are all around the world so the wall has been taken down by Christ Jesus whosoever believes in him has everlasting life okay so that's pretty simple it really is very simple so now Satan is bound he doesn't have control over nations like he did before but after the thousand years he will like he did before because the kingdom of God will not be on the earth it'll be up in the air right so all that's left on the earth for this short time are gonna be unsaved people all right, pretty simple stuff okay and then a time of peace a time of peace there is coming a time of peace after the end of the world when the holy city of God the new Jerusalem comes down out of heaven onto the earth then will be a time of peace not a time not a short time but a time of everlasting peace that'll never change once that peace that real peace comes it'll be everlasting of course Jesus gives us that peace everlasting peace not as the world gives right in John 14 verse 27 peace I leave unto you my peace I give unto you not as the world gives give I unto you let your heart not be troubled 
Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So once we remove the world, then we have everlasting peace. Okay? Yeah, pretty simple stuff, and it's never going to be taken away from us. It's not a short time period of peace. And some people are willing to admit, many are not, what they mean by this time of peace, they mean that there's going to be a time where they're going to be able to have sex like they were 20 years old and guilt-free sex with all kinds of women. That's what they believe. Most people won't admit it. Most people won't admit that the reason they teach this idea is because they want this time period of guilt-free sex. That's why they teach it. That's why they teach it. If you knew that you wouldn't be so quick to believe it. Thousand years, referred to as the millennium, Christ reigns with his saints. Those who uh, are uh, okay, hold on a second. Now, this this idea, Christ reigns with the saints. Christ reigns with the saints. Could think about the the wording of that. Christ reigns with the saints. It doesn't even say that. It says the opposite. The opposite of what he just said. He says, Christ reigns with his saints. Christ reigns with his saints. That's the opposite of what it says. It's they, the saints, reign with Christ. What this guy says is the opposite. Christ reigns with his saints. They live and reign with Christ. They reign with Christ. He says, Christ reigns with them. They reign with him. The saints reign with him. Right? The saints reign with Christ. And what's he say? Christ reigns with his saints. I mean, again, I, I, if you knew what these guys are teaching, you wouldn't be so quick to believe them. It's unbelievable. We, now, you ought to know that Jesus reigns over the house of Jacob forever. Not for a thousand years, not for a short time, and then the rug's pulled out. Right? And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. So it's not going to be a thousand year kingdom. He's not going to reign for a thousand years. He reigns forever and his kingdom is there is no end. And this is incredible. I, I wonder do are people paying attention now I get it there's a whole bunch of people out there that don't read their Bible they just listen to the false teachers whatever they say that's what they believe and then these guys that teach us stuff they're getting their teaching from false teachers so whatever they teach that they just echo what they've been taught but then when you turn to the Bible you see the complete opposite of what they teach it's incredible. But, you know, I think that's by spiritual, uh, spiritual design. Right? When you consider um, many verses make this people's heart fat. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. What, what I do? What I say? Make fat? Well, that's, that's probably not enough. Uh, make the heart of this people fat. Right? And uh, and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes. Lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Right? So these people are tired of hearing the, the word of God. And so they're hearing the words of men and not understanding, obviously, 
that because they do this, God will choose their delusions and bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. And again, this is all over the Bible. Even today, even today when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Okay? And this is what's clearly happening. It's incredible to me that the scripture can say one thing and then these guys will turn everything around and teach the exact opposite using the same words but teaching the opposite. It's incredible. During these thousand years, referred to as the millennium, Christ reigns with his saints. Those who were martyred for their testimony... I think referred to as the millennium. Referred to by who? It's not referred to by God as the millennium. Is it? Think about that. Money of Jesus and for the word of God are resurrected and reign with Christ. Whoa, 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 whoa. It just throw in, just throw these things in there. It's like, hey, no big deal. Blah 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 blah. They, I don't think they even hear the words that they teach. I really don't. I mean it. And I just think people are tired of hearing the truth. They don't care about it anymore. That's what I think. During these thousand years, referred to as the millennium, Christ reigns with his saints. <clears throat> Those who were martyred for their testimony of Jesus and for the word of God are resurrected and reign with Christ. This is known as the first resurrection. Uh, that's not what it refers to. That's not what is known. I mean, it might be known by unsaved people. Right? People that are deceived. But that's not what the Bible says. I mean, it's incredible. It's like only people that don't know what the Bible say, what the Bible says is are going to be fooled by these guys. If you're a Bible believer, you love the Lord Jesus Christ, why wouldn't you read the Bible? Why wouldn't you believe the Bible's from God? I mean, who are you going to believe? God? You're going to believe the Lord Jesus Christ, whom you say you love? Are you going to listen to him? Right. Who are you going to listen to? These men that don't know God or God Himself? Right? You think about this. Think about this. I gotta think about this a second. I gotta think about this a second. I gotta think about this a second. In John chapter 11, Jesus says, I am the resurrection. Alright, so consider that. Jesus says, I am the resurrection. So, is there a resurrection before Jesus that can claim that 
they or it is the resurrection and Jesus is the second resurrection as if the first resurrection was something before Jesus and Jesus is the resurrection after uh, what what do you think man what do you think so you go to Revelation 20 and it says the first resurrection Well, how do you reconcile that? I'm telling you, you can't get around this. You, you want to say that there are two resurrections after Jesus? Then Jesus isn't the resurrection anymore. Okay. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, what happens? We follow him. Right? Jesus has led the way. He is God manifest in the flesh. He has laid down his life. He has died in this flesh that we are in. He died. And then he rose up out of the grave and not just rose up out of the grave but ascended to heaven he is the resurrection and those of us that believe in him we're going to follow the path that he has taken for us so we follow him we will follow him into the grave out of the grave and up in the air all right, so in order for there to be another resurrection after that, there has to be somebody else to be the resurrection. Hey, what you're, <laughs> this idea, I mean, you, I don't think people are using their brains. I really don't. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. And this is, the same thing over and over we're being told the same thing over and over Christ the first roots all right in so in order to it does it's so mind bogglingly Lee Lee dumb to say that Jesus isn't the first resurrection. It's incredible. This idea of what? Christ returns, Christ comes in the clouds of heaven. Jesus is in the air and we are lifted up in the air. And then what? Well, where are you getting this idea of multiple of what what this happens at the end of the world where are you getting this idea of a second resurrection after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven I mean this stuff is not even vaguely not even remotely implied in the Bible anywhere at all when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven that's it that's the resurrection he is the resurrection. And because he's the resurrection, when he comes back, we will be resurrected with him. There is no other event like this ever. And this is it. <laughs> it's going to play out this way, no matter what people teach. Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Oh, all are some. 
because in order to fit this idea that only certain people will be resurrected at the first part and then the rest of the people will be resurrected in the second part well is there a third part then and that idea is not supported by the Bible anywhere not even remotely not even you can't take a Bible verse anywhere to support that idea of a resurrection after Jesus comes in clouds of heaven and we are resurrected. It just does not make any sense. Okay, so every man in his own order. <clears throat> right, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. There is no wiggle room. To say, well, afterward, they that are Christ that is coming, that means seven or eight times there's going to be this plucking up of people out of the earth. No. That's, there's no wiggle room for that. None whatsoever. Because when Christ comes, that's it. At his coming. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming coming so when he comes in the clouds of heaven then are we resurrected Christ the first fruits all right you can't get around this man you cannot get around this Christ being the first resurrection afterward they that are Christ at his coming and then that's it that's it then that's it. There is no more, there is no wiggle room whatsoever for this idea of multiple resurrections after Jesus comes. There's just none, none. Again, the idea is, well, only some people are going to get resurrected. We're still going to be on earth having sex with all the women. That's, I mean, just be honest. That's what you're wanting to happen. That's what you're teaching. That's what you believe deep down in your wicked heart. That's what you want to happen. You want to get all the Christians out of the way so you can have all the filthiness to yourself. Well, it's not going to happen. But I would um, implore you to just be honest about what you believe. These guys aren't being honest at all. They just want to create this time. They think they can will it to happen. Create this time period where they can just have sex, sex, sex. <laughs> and it, it's obvious to me. Whether you see it or not, I don't know. It's kind of funny because the rug is going to get pulled out. Not from us, but from them. When Jesus comes, there will be no more sex. Yeah, so the rug is going to get pulled out from these guys that they think they found a loophole. And it's not going to work. All right, so if you consider... First uh, John chapter 2, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever all right now consider this when jesus comes in the clouds of heaven what happens the sun shall be darkened the moon shall not give her light the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken all right and this is consistent in matthew 24 mark 13 and luke 21 stars of heaven shall fall the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken what's going on here when this is happening you think it's just a little little wiggle stuff a little little song and dance that's going on up up in the air uh, 
men's hearts failing them for fear. It's a big event, right? There shall be signs in the sun, on the moon, and the stars. Upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity. The seas and the waves roaring. Men having heart attacks. The powers of the heavens shall be shaken. What's going on? Jesus is coming. That's what's going on. There ain't going to be no mistaken about it. So let's go to Second Peter chapter 3. What's this talking about? The heavens shall melt with fervent heat. Huh? Wait a second. What? When's this happen? When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and the earth melts with fervent heat, and all the works that are therein shall be burned up. So how are you going to have a resurrection, a second resurrection after the, we're resurrected? Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and we are lifted up. We are resurrected. How can you say, well, only some people will get resurrected? How do you say that? Because, look, <laughs> you're not going to have any more saved people on earth. And then you're not going to have any more unsaved people on the earth. The earth and the heavens, the elements, the works, are all going to be burned up. That doesn't leave any wiggle room for this idea that some people get resurrected at one point and then there comes an, another point later on down the road where more people get resurrected. And what in the world is going on here? People don't care about the truth whatsoever, do they? And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm gonna keep beating this drum. These people are teaching this stuff because they want to have guilt-free sex. They want to get all the Christians out of the way. They want a planet Earth with nothing but virgins and prostitutes. And they can have all the sex just like they did when they were you know, 16, 20 years old. Just, just like a madman, right? Just all kinds of dirty, stinky, filthy sex. Sex, sex. But what's going to happen when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven is that the heavens and the earth are going to pass away. And this idea that all this business about having stinky sex, the rug is going to get pulled out from you. It's not going to happen. Right? And you don't think this is what it, what's going on? Even though the Bible says that this is what's going on? There shall come... I mean, even Peter says, know this first. That in the last days there shall come scoffers walking after their own lust. Yeah, you don't believe it? Well, it's happening. And it's worse than what people realize.